Good morning, everyone. It is Sunday, the 12th of September. It's the final day of Cyber Squash 2021. Thank you all for tuning in uh, either live or on our replay on our YouTube channel. We're all glad that you're here. Uh, my name is Tim Lloyd. I'm one of your Squatch commanders for this year. Uh, I think this is my fourth year uh, helping to organize a Sword Squatch event. And uh, I will also be your moderator today. So a couple of quick reminders uh, for those of you who are just tuning in uh, and, uh, who might be new to Sword Squatch. Um, I want to make sure that, that we point out a couple of things from our code of conduct. Uh, first of all, Black Lives Matter. Please be kind to, to each other. Please be kind to your moderator and our uh, streaming services uh, and be patient with any tech difficulties that come up. Um, we are uh, here in Seattle broadcasting uh, from unceded Duwamish native lands. And I believe that uh, our host today is, uh, is broadcasting from uh, Lenny Lenape land. Is that correct, Dan? All right. Yes. And uh, we are sponsored this year by Purple Heart Armory. So thank you to, to those folks. Uh, please go check them out and uh, buy some cool stuff from them if you like. Uh, if anybody uh, happens to not follow our code, uh, I would be perfectly happy to disconnect you from, from the uh, stream. So please be nice to each other. If you have any questions, uh, use the Q&A, uh, use the chat, um, hit us up on Facebook, and uh, we will do some Q&A uh, at the end. And so with that, I will introduce our uh, instructor for today, uh, Dan Halliday from the Liberty Sword Club. And uh, Dan, take it away. Uh, hello, good afternoon, good morning, good, e good evening. I don't know where everybody's at. Uh, so, and, ah, yes, my, uh, my the trackpad on my laptop decided it does not need to work today. Great, so uh, I'm Dan, uh, broadcasting from the piece of Lenny Lenape land that you may know as Jersey City, New Jersey, uh, where I have my, my club, Liberty Sword Club. Uh, so this is so this is uh, a lecture that I call the folding settle. And it's uh, I think most people who are in who are kind of uh, who are kind of really steeped in, in KDF probably already this is probably not going to be new, anything new to to those people. Uh, however, it's it's uh, something that for me at least really changed changed the way I approach uh, the art, the, the way I approach leads and hours. So, uh, Leads and hours work, and and uh, I think could be helpful to some people. All right, uh, now I have about four slides of a slideshow, a makeshift Pell, and and a, and a bicycle repair stand, and hopefully the combination of these these things together will actually make this make this a lecture thing, class, whatever that works. Oh, so uh, let's see, I'm gonna start sharing my screen. I, of course, have not made a PowerPoint slideshow since 2003. Uh, so so uh, yeah, relearning PowerPoint by using not PowerPoint is, uh, is kind of kind of interesting. All right, so let's get into it. So uh, this is lecture, the folding settle. Uh, so some of the, so first of all, what, uh, what are my goals here? What do I want? to what I want to get across in this lecture, uh, to bring the settle closer to the forefront of, of one's practice. It's, uh, the, the settle is of course the kind of central central piece uh, to the Litzenauer tradition. And about a year ago, I sort of, I found myself kind of a little bit more interested in just taking a look at the settle then than the glosses. Uh, the, and the, then the gloss is at least not as as a at least not having the glosses as my primary means of approaching the the art. And because because uh, for a long time the the whole thing seemed really murky. It seems like this kind of this abyss of techniques and names that just that didn't have any kind of cohesive structure to it. So I started going, going through the settlements and saying, all right, well, you know, why, why, is, why are these things, why are these things here? And I think that by paying attention to, 
to that primarily and, and the glosses as little bits of clarification here and there. I think that's, I think that's done a lot of good for, for my understanding of, of this. And so I'm hoping to, to, uh, provide, to provide maybe some of the right questions or some, so some ideas on approaching this uh, in your own practice. Uh, to demystify the title by thinking critically about it, again, again, why is this here? Why is this written in this way at this time? How does this relate to the things, to the things around it? And what is this teaching me right now? What might it be teaching, teaching me later? Because because as I as I found the meanings of the meanings of a phrase of a, of a couplet might change as you learn new things later on. They'll change, but they'll stay the same. But they'll also mean another thing at the same time. And somehow this all works. And to offer the idea that more often than not, there is more than one right answer. There is uh, there's a, a tendency that I think. Uh, that I think a lot of us fall into, myself, myself included, to have have here is the to have a technique, and here is the name of the technique, and the technique must be the technique is to be performed in this way, and if it's not performed in this way, then it is then it, then, uh, then it must be something else. When uh when I uh, I question the the utility of kind of looking at things in that. In those terms, how is uh, how is it, this particular thing done? Eh, well, there, there could be there could be a few ways of of going about that. There, it seems that more often than not, again, there is more than right, one right answer, and that this also helps to put a lot of information into a really compact space. So, before we get any further, uh, what is the cell? It is a the poetic verse attributed to a figure called Johannes Ritzenauer. I don't, uh, out of the people watching, I don't know who who is and is not familiar with this, so I'm going to kind of go back to this, and and just kind of clarify that part. Uh, so it is the poetic verse attributed to a figure called Johannes Ritzenauer. Is was he a real person? Eh, who knows? Uh, but what we have have is this is this poem left behind, and we have we have glosses, we have uh, various commentaries written on the subject of, of this settle. In this part, he's talking about this, and this part, he's talking about that as well. And then the glosses proceed to give, give their own kind of, kind, of, kind of flavors, interpretations, and elaborations on certain ideas. Uh, it encapsulates the entirety of, of Lichtenauer's art. There are three settles. One is for unarmed fencing. That is the one that most of us, that most of us study. It is the plus question, and it is, a, I believe, it's the longest of, of the three. Uh, a lot of most of the principles at least get laid down and, and established here. There is another channel for, for armored foot combat and one for, for mounted fighting, uh, which are outside of the scope of this particular class. Settle is arranged into verses, each of which has its own set of lessons. Uh, some of these are quite long, while others are only a single couplet long. The Gemeinde uh, for example, the, the Common Teachings, which is the second, second verse of, of the title, is, is very, very long. Uh, I think, oh, I, I, don't, I don't remember how many, how many couplets there are in that, but, but there is quite a bit. The Zornhau, uh, Zorn which is the fourth, fourth verse, is also one of the longer ones. Uh, whereas hand pressing is just two lines, it's just it's a single couplet. It's a it's a fairly fairly simple idea, and I think that by the time you've got gotten up to that point, you have a pretty good idea of what that of what that particular line means. And I don't think that Litzenauer has a great deal to great deal more to say about it there. So uh, yes, gloss is useful in figuring out what each line means. Uh, they help to, to demystify the uh, to demystify the language. And uh, my notes. Uh, right, yes. After all, uh, 
uh, according to Tobler's translation. Uh, the title can be intimidating as it is a cryptic verse, secret and suspicious, uh, use it using quote, secret and suspicious words uh, so that so that those who who so the uninitiated don't don't know what he's what he's talking about. So, why folding? What are we? What am I referring to when I say that it is folding? Uh, so, why do we fold things? We fold things to make them fit into places. If you have ever um, if you ever hastily pack a suitcase by just Jamming things, uh, jamming things into the suitcase without folding them. Often, oftentimes, you'll find that it doesn't all fit in that suitcase. Meanwhile, if you take the take the extra time to, to fold everything nicely and, and put it in there, you can pack everything in there much tighter, much tighter, much tidier, and everything is easier to go through to go through later. So you can fit more into a smaller space, and it simplifies your interaction with the object. So luggage works this way. Uh, our brains work this way. Our brains are folded. Our organs are folded. Everything must fit in the meat gundam. And uh, when these things have a, make their way outside of the meat gundam and become unfolded, it requires very smart people to put them back in. So the, the, settle, I, the, the settle works kind of the same way. In... In that we are, in that with each thing that we learn, it's then necessary to go back and reflect and meditate on the previous things that we've we've learned before that, and think how does this change? How does this change what I've already learned? How does this add to it? And and how can I file this? How can I file these changes in the same places? that I files the thing that I just learned. Really good visual uh, representation of what I'm talking about here, labyrinths. Uh, this one in particular is the labyrinth of Chartres Cathedral in France, which is, oh, here's my cursor. Uh, and this, this image just kind of gives you a, an idea of the scale of, of the thing. I, I think, the, I think the figure that I heard is that it's about 12 yards long uh, and 200 something yards in total length. So you have a very, very long, long path just to make it this very small radius in the middle. Is my, uh, is my arrow visible? I don't know. All right. Uh, in order to get just that far, you need to go through this through this entire thing. And we get to a slightly more concise view, a little, little bit clearer. Let's kind of take a look at the way the, the way the labyrinth goes. Right here I am. Here's the, my beginning. There is my end. And but I don't get there by walking straight up to it. Rather, I sort of get into the middle of things and then very quickly I get so close to the end, I can see it. I can view the end from all of these angles, but then I start working my way away from it again. And it continues like this, uh, is you are constantly doubling back, you are constantly uh, you are constantly going back along paths that you've you've already been on, or at least close to them. And and going back on these on these paths and remembering where you've already been helps to put those things into into a new context in your mind. Uh, helps you to remember them. And it connects, and it connects things together that are, that are seemingly very far apart. This, this little bit right here is right next to this little bit over here. Even though, even though I go quite a quite a ways before I get, before I get to this point. Uh, another example of this could be: so you're at the airport, and 
and uh, thankfully the you know security is empty. So, so you go back and forth through the uh, through the uh, through the, the barriers, and and you you go this way and that way and this way and that way and this way and that way. So do you do that? Do you go right along that whole path, or do you just kind of go under under them as you go? It depends on, on what kind of hurry you're in. But the point is, you can travel a very long. You can you can travel the entire length of the line by just sort of cutting through it, and that is that is very much uh, what we're getting at with this idea of the of the folding settle. Uh, this, <laughs> this, this slide is not totally written out uh, because of course I have a, yeah, this, this is, this has become a little bit of a tricky thing to represent visually in slideshow form. So we're gonna, we're gonna see how this goes. But evil versus early modern thought or modern thought even is, I think I wonder, can I, no, I cannot just put in text. All right. All right so you're going to get my get my crappy handwriting because I'm writing with a mouse. Uh, I'm also not going to, I'm not gonna talk too much about this because I'm not particularly well studied on this topic. Uh, but if you actually, um, quick little, little, little pause here. If you want to read, a, if, you, if you want to know, uh, if you want a great source on, on, uh, on medieval thought and memory, uh, Jess Finley's lecture from Long Point 2019, uh, the, the one about the trees. Uh, that, is, that is really good. Uh, excellent, excellent work on, uh, on mnemonic devices of the, of the Middle Ages. And in that lecture, Jess gets into this, into this kind of uh, pairs of pairs, uh, or, or as, as I like to, to put it, the P4 plus one, where this uh, this shows up in in the humors. We have um we have our, our we have our four humors. We have our four elements. We have we have four guards. We have various combinations of these four qualities, often with a fifth quality as as a uniting thing. And so there's so we're thinking about things in terms of of uh, of basic qualities. There are also large overarching ideas which are combined together in various in various combinations and permutations to to give us whatever the idea is that we that we want to express. A uh, a modern modern example of of this actually actually is uh, the wildly popular twenty seventeen book Salt, Fat, Acid, Heat, in which in which the author talks about about food and the way different and then the way the way flavors interact together using the, these four qualities of salt, fat, acid, heat. Uh, so there's and by kind of putting these these things into by putting things into these really broad categories that still kind of kind of play together in unique ways, you can take really complex ideas and make them fairly simple. Uh, now, somewhere around the beginning of uh, now, around the as we roll into the early modern era, so realistically, sometime sometime during the early fifteenth sixteenth uh, century, we start seeing a trend towards atomization. Uh, I'll try and uh, I'll try and drop a uh, drop a link in the chat chat later to a uh, talk from the Thomistic Institute. Uh, Thomism being the the, uh, the school of Aristotelian thought attributed to uh, Thomas Aquinas. Aristotelian thought, or, or or otherwise, scholasticism being being very much the being a dominant philosophy of of the medieval period. Uh, but people kind of start moving away from from that. Uh, anyway, in this in this uh, talk, I think it was thing was given at UC Berkeley. Uh, the talk is given by a by a Catholic priest who's also a physicist and a Thomistic philosopher who uh, talks about this. I, again, I'll I'll throw a link down in the uh, in the chat at some point. 
very, very good, uh, good talk for kind of getting, getting an idea of, of what's going on with this. And at that point, people, people are dissatisfied with this, with these, these uh, you know, four qualities, four, four basic ideas, putting them, them together. People want to know more, people want to get deeper. And we have a, tr a trend towards atomization. Uh, breaking things down into their smallest parts uh, to understand those sm those smallest parts, and uh, and this and and this is a trend that carries through to through to, through to today. How to get under the hood? See how everything how everything works. Get into the get into the nitty gritty, the minute details, and so so. Uh, the way that I've I've sort of chosen to to approach approach Leeds and Hour is is uh, an attempt to to approach medieval medieval uh, martial arts in medieval terms. So trying to approach it in terms of of uh, big ideas, qualities qualities rather than than um, than particles. Uh, I don't know if that, that makes any sense. And, and kind of working from there. It's well, as, as we get into this, uh, I think it should, that might make a little bit more sense. Uh, so approaching with assumptions. I, oh, I don't have any of those, those in there, do I? No, I don't, okay. Uh, so, what, so approaching with, with assumptions. So the assumptions that I've got here is, uh, approaching with assumptions, uh, Luton Hours Art is a complete system. That's I'm choosing to approach it that way. Whether and uh, whether or not Luton Hour assumes anything about the competence of of the person studying is is uh, I I'm not sure how relevant that is to this particular discussion. So I'm keeping so I'm not really going going at that too much. And I'm also going under the assumption that everything, everything that's in the verse is there for a reason, is there for a reason, or it's there for multiple reasons. So now that we've got all that out of the way, I'm we're gonna get get into into the Tsarnhow. Uh, because that is kind of the first place where we see. Where we see this show up. And so this is Tobler's, Tobler's translation of the Rome. Can I come on? Let's get there. So what we're gonna, what I'm gonna, what I want to do here is I want to go through this. I want to go through the first few lines of Tsarnhow and take a look at how they play with play with each other, and then I'll I'll um, kind of give a uh, give an actual uh, give a practical demo of that in the hopes of kind of uh, getting uh, in, the, in the hopes of making that a little bit more clear because. Showing it is a, is is a lot easier, I think, than doing this on paper. So, we'll start. We'll start here. Who strikes at you from above? The rat stroke threatens them with the point. Okay, so we have, and so we have blah blah blah. You know, strike comes in. You meet that. You meet that with another strike, and you you meet in the middle. And and let's say we we've got um. And so, okay, and then you extend the point, and that's, and then, you know, and then so from there, your, your point is, your point is forward, and you should be able to, to stick them with the point. Okay, cool. Now, why is this, now, why might this be here? Well, uh, what is the position that it, that it gives us? Well, it gives us this, this position in which swords are crossed, and you can just, and you can just extend. Okay. Okay, that's cool. Uh, and, you know, you can practice. You can practice that all all day. Just uh, just getting there it doesn't say anything about that footwork. Uh, 
doesn't particularly doesn't particularly matter. I don't I don't think as long as you get there. So all right, that's simple enough. Then if they become aware of it, take it away above without fear. So uh, oh man, it's actually you know is there a way that I can like split the uh, uh, I can't split the the screen share with with my feed, can I? Wow. Let me let me poke around and see what I can do. Yeah. Oh well. Uh, so if they become aware of it, take it away above, above without without fear. So I'm pushed off to the pushed off to the side. Bing. There we go. There's that could have that could that gives us an idea of what this of why this line is is here. So just approaching this from if we're approaching this just from the beginning, then then right here. Okay, I am. You know what? Yeah, let's. Uh, uh, I'm going to pause share. Right? Uh, am I? Is my is my feet up on the screen now? Uh, stand by. Now, there we go. You can see your beautiful face. Okay, cool. So, so just so to give a visual of where we're where we're at, at here. How whatever, I'm I'm here. Maybe, maybe I've gotten there by we're going to we assume that I've gotten there by, by striking it against, against this strike. <laughs> If I were, if I wanted to teach this, then that makes that makes sense as a really solid place to start out. All right, great. And now, if I were this, if I were this person who was who was just kind of been set upon with this, with the point here, I might, I might, uh, I might react to this by pushing them, them offline. Okay, that that makes that makes a lot of sense. Then we're, we're told to take off. We're, Told to, to take off above and get down to the other side of the, the sword. Reasonable. And in, in this case, it makes the most sense to go up and then down. You go up and down and up, and you go up and then down. And that's and that's the way this is this is presented first. So so we got that. We got that leading into this, and then, then we find ourselves. Come on, then we find ourselves here. So in so in this last one, we were we were met with with a displacement to the side. Here, uh, here I'm not being displaced to the side. Uh, I just, I just plain can't. I just plain can't get my point forward. I keep trying to extend my point. It's, it's not working. I can't. I can't really get onto the other side of the sword because his because because their other sword is kind of kind of right here. Oh, he's stronger against. Now he's on the line thrust. Reason, reasonable. That that totally works. Now here is where we see the you see that first fold. Now so a thing has happened here where I've where I've wound up. But what happens if I'm then, if I am then displaced to the side? If I'm if I'm here and I'm then displaced to the side, do I do I do I uh, decide that the open object means means and then go down exactly like this, or? 
if I'm here and I go up and then down like that, then is it the same? Then is this the same technique? Is do we still could we still could we still call this the the oven oven abnaming? Uh, maybe. It depends on how, how you want, want to look at it. Does it matter? Does it does it matter whether or not it's whether or not this is the one true abnaming or if this is the one true abnaming? The point is that we that we've already seen seen a fold take place. We have seen we have seen some conditions created by this one change this one in a tiny way. Uh, in a tiny way, but it's there, isn't it? Now, if, now the action, now the second line here, uh, or rather the, the last part of this, this first line, uh, wine roast, if they see it, take it, take it down or below. I, I, I tend to like below. So let's so let's talk a, bit, a little bit about why that might be there. And if in the first case, I was I was perfectly capable of just extending. So that's the answer. That's a, that's a reasonable answer there. If in the second case, I was not capable of extending, but I was also displaced laterally, then this makes sense. In the third case, I was not displaced, but I also couldn't just come up off, off of the sword. Be stronger against. That makes sense. So if they see it, then take it, then take it below. Which, which brings which uh, brings us to an, an next which reaction. Uh, where they, oh no, and pushing off to the side. Go, I'm saying, oh, they're saying, oh no, and pushing, pushing me up. And, and, and so now we are now given a new situation and a new position. And additionally, how often do you find you find yourself here? Uh, this is these these three positions that that you're given right off the bat are three positions that keep coming up, uh, and that as as the art becomes more complex, more and more solutions are given uh, are given to the problems of the, of these various positions and many more. So let's say that I've I've come here. So 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 right away, so right away we're finding another fold. Now it may be that I had that I had my my long edge down and I was just going to thrust forward and I got pushed up here. Or it may be that I had that I had wound up and then and was then pushed up here in response to that. Either way, whether I'm this way or this way, they're above. And so it's all taken below. In keeping with uh, what the glosses say, boop, just take just take it below. What does it? But now does this taken below have to look like this? What if I'm uh, what if I'm I'm here instead? Well, we, we already know we already know what this, this position is, so it makes sense to, to find yourself here because, because this is just a vertical displacement of the first thing. And then, then okay, yeah, sure, maybe I, maybe from Maybe from there, I just I just wind down, and 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 my winding happens in the process of doing that. So from these from these first three couplets, we have we have this the first line of this of this third couplet affecting this and this. We have the second half of of that line. Affecting both of these, uh, 
Also, quick little, quick little, uh, little, little thing, thing here. The uh, or should not be be in haste. It's been a little time looking up this word gach, and uh, and it's most of it. Its meanings are mostly premature or uh, prematurely or too quickly or or uh, you know doing a thing doing a thing kind of kind of hastily or before it's before it's ready to be done. But the very last definition in uh, this is in uh, in Hennig's, uh, Middle High German Dictionary. The last meaning of Gach translates to Zorni. Uh, angrily, wrathfully. So this this is I, I just like this this bit here because it's because you know just just spend a, all these lines here talking about the wrath strike and and then it kind of gives you the ah yes now now don't don't be hasty and also don't be angry. Uh, that's just I don't know that, that's a cool thing. Uh, uh, now I'm gonna skip over. Gonna skip over over these a little. Uh, you know what? No, no. I'm gonna I'm gonna go go through this. Uh, also, by the way, none of what I'm saying saying here should be taken as as any kind of assertion that this is uh, this is the way it is or this this is how things must be done. Uh, if if anything, the point of the point of this is to is to have people start start kind of start questioning and, and interrogating, or yes, that's the word, interrogating uh, their understanding of, of the system and kind of come to, come to a deep, deeper understanding of how, of, of how you personally, uh, would, will, how you personally would like to express uh, the art. Uh, so strike thrust, uh, posture opposition, softer, softer hard. Uh, the way I tend to look at this as we have a dichotomy of strike thrust, uh, giving us oh, there is there is a Loki on my desk, uh, uh, giving us a, a vector. Which uh, which where's the where is the sword coming from? Where is the sword going? Uh, Lega, just where is the sword? Where is it? Where is your sword? Where is their sword? And analyzing these things together kind of get you know kind of gives you the the uh, stronger weak so kind of a geometry or positioning of the two swords. So after hard, uh, where's where's the pressure going? Uh, I'm I'm not going to touch Indes with a with a ten foot pole. That is not what what we're here for in this uh, in this one. So now, now this is an interesting. So this, we start getting into the into the creed. Now the, the walls have, have a great deal deal to say about this. But what you find here is that we have we have a reiteration of of this. We have we have this. Um, we're kind of doubling down on this. They they go high. You you go low. And as these things things would would tend to go, it is it can also be implied there that if they go low, you go high. Um, again, this this is the this is the whole whole idea of kind of kind of working working in opposites. If there is a if there is a uh, if there's an idea that tends to sway to one side. Uh, if, if there's an idea that sways to one side. There's probably a counterpart to it on the other side. Uh, uh, you know, you get uh, you know, esoteric, uh, esoteric phrases like as above, so below, uh, as within, so, so without, uh, the, the microcosm and the macrocosm. And the idea that, that uh, small things are reflected in the big picture and big things are reflected in the small picture. Now here is here is where this gets gets particularly interesting to me. In all winding, learn to find stro stroke, thrust, and slice. So okay, winding. 
where have we seen this, this word before? We've seen it. Hey, what do you know right here? We keep coming back to this word, wind. So this gives us yet another, yet another thing to go back and take a look at. Okay, so learn how to find stroke, rust, or, or slice. And, uh, and, and of course, the gloss says, oh, so yeah, so, so here's the thing. When you're doing this, you got to know which one to do. It's like, yeah, oh, gee, yeah, yeah, thanks, guys. Thanks, that's real helpful. It's, it's the, like, you know, you know that song? You got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them. It's like that. You know, a guy meets a gambler at a, at a bar and the gambler's like, yeah, if you buy me a drink, I'll tell you the secrets of my game. So he's like, oh man, cool. This gambler's gonna, gonna teach, me, teach me the way. So he buys the gambler a drink and the gambler basically just says, yeah, just don't suck. Got a little bit of that energy here. It all winding. So here's, here's a winding. I'm, I'm turning, turning the sword. Okay, that's that's really straightforward. That's it's where this is introduced to us with the point. In all windings, learn to find stroke cut, cut slice. Okay, so what if? So here's a situation that that uh, I think we've all found ourselves in pretty often is is a uh, maybe I'm over here, and and that and that's just where our swords wound up. And I can't, and my tip is already past, past them. If I just thought it would extend my point, then of course I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna hit them because my tip is already past them. So we, we, we've already been given this, given this winding. And if I come up here and thrust. Uh, but my tip is still past them, so do I draw back? And then come into the point. Or in all windings, do I find do I find a strike? And so all of a sudden, the very same motion as this becomes well, that's interesting. A little bit closer. Well, that is interesting. So all of a sudden, any of these times when I'm when I'm turning my sword over, there's there's an opportunity to create some sort of arc. Now let's get this a little bit closer. Nope, nope can't actually. I'm using a pair of 45 pound plates as as the base. Two. Yeah, let's get me a little bit closer. And, and maybe, maybe I'm, I'm here. I can't really go, go below. Can't take off. I need to wind. But the, but the strike, ah, uh, that doesn't really do it for me. Like, I don't like how, how far I'm on my strong I am. That's fine. I now have one of leverage on the body in that same action. Closer. There was the thrust. There was the strike. A little bit closer than that. There is the slice. And, and whether you, you choose to endeavor the slice is applying leverage to the body or actually slicing off is is a is a key, but, but the point is all of a sudden just from that one line I've opened up I've opened up a number of possibilities for myself and I've taken things that I've already learned and already internalized just tweaking them a little bit adding to them a little bit in all windings maybe I have so what's what's another place where where this, where this might work. I've, I've wound up here and so, nah, you know what, no, let's, uh, I'm not gonna do that quite yet. 
And so from so from there he 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 proceeds to kind of kind of go through through four openings. Oh, ooh, that's that's trippy. All right, let me just erase all of that. Oh, that's that's easier than I expected. Four openings, no aim, so you hit certainly, blah, blah, blah. So now let's actually get back to the to the odd name and uh, uh, an, an idea that I, uh, the whole thing that I've been sort of, the, uh, makes me think of the ship of Theseus. You know, uh, Theseus has a, has a ship. And over time, the parts break and the parts all get replaced. And eventually, every single part on the ship has been replaced. Is it still the ship of the, is it still the same ship? Do we want to still call this call this the odd naming when it looks like when it looks like that? Because just kind of getting around to the to the other side, I'm on the other side of the sword, and I can because suppose suppose in in this suppose we're in a place where I've learned I've learned uh, learned it's right how maybe maybe it just so happens that I've learned that I've learned the the crew and I, I can do something like that. I'm still, I'm still coming up and coming down on the other side of the sword. The difference here is that is that I have I've taken 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 out each thing that I learn and then go back through uh, and then and then go back through the the text. And apply those ideas to, to the ideas that I've already learned and internalized, thus building up the motor programs that accompany those. And, and we get this all continuing all the way through this, uh, finding you know, we're finding ourselves in in lots of new situations, learning lots of new lessons for, for each of these verses as they as they go on. This this could I mean this could be discussed for hours and hours and hours. All the way to the very to before the conclusion to the to the end of to the end of this whole spiel here in wherein we get to the annotate, wherein we get to Sprechfenster, the speaking window. And, you know, go, go into you know, the glosses, you know, do the speaking window, sting, sting, blindly look at his actions. Uh, you know, basically, basically do all, do all your, if you've learned all of this, this stuff here, do all your fencing, do all your fencing long, and because uh, you can do all of these things from there, and you're just you're you're gonna be be the coolest guy around if you can if you can do that, and nobody's gonna be able to, to touch you. Blah 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 blah. Here's the thing: if Spreckfenster is is this fencing from from Langort, where do we find ourselves right all the way at the beginning of this? It puts us right back back here, right back where we where we started. And and so to that end, uh, going going back through the things that you, you've already learned and Maybe approaching them with with uh, with a new set of eyes or a new set of ideas, and 
you'll find that that certain certain things that you've you've already gone through are things that things that uh that now seem a little a little bit different. They haven't they haven't lost the meaning that you that you originally understood them to have, but now they have an additional layer of meaning uh, transposed. I don't even want to say on top or underneath, but transposed uh, sort of within them, or or aside them, or existing in the same in the same kind of a little little bubble in your brain. So, so yeah, I never thought I never actually thought about how to conclude this. So these, so, and that is, and that is really the crux of of what I'm trying to trying to get at here is is go through is go through the title. Uh, ask yourself why why certain lessons are in certain places. If the gloss, and, and if you find the gloss is talking about a thing you haven't learned yet, then maybe set those pieces, maybe set those particular pieces aside. And, and you'll find that when you do get to a, to a point that I talks about the, the sort of relevant mechanisms of those pieces, all of a sudden they'll make a lot more sense. Uh, you know, for for example, you know the. You know, let's let's go back to the Ave Patricius. You know, so let's see, like you know, one of the the counters to the to the Ave is they go to they go to the boat and get to the other side of, of your sword, and you pretty much just just stay stay on them. You don't let their sword get away. Um, Wing Chun has uh, has sticky hands. We have we have sticky swords. Uh, but that doesn't get talked about for a while. So that doesn't get talked about for a while. And so you could choose to to kind of go go we we, we do this play and we do the counters to this this play and the counters to those those counters. Uh, that is that is a way to to go about it. However. Uh, I might suggest going. I might suggest perhaps uh, coming back to those things when you get to a point in, in the settle that seems to explain the mechanisms of those particular plays. And wow, I really don't know how to how to conclude this one. Uh, yeah, in conclusion. Go through the whole, go through the whole thing a little bit at a time. Go through it slowly. With each little thing you learn, fold it, uh, fold it. Go back, see, see where it connects to other things, and make those connections. And in doing this, uh, in doing this, I think that you, that you create a much, uh, much. You create a stronger connection to the art, art itself, and you create an expression of the art that is very much your own. So yeah, I'm gonna choose to just kind of conclude that there before I keep rambling on and uh, do some QA. Wow, that's wow, it's already almost huh, that was 55 minutes. Nice. So uh, yeah, that's 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 that. That's what I got. Uh, if we got questions, I guess. Right, folks, yeah. Um, if you have a question for Dan, please uh, the little raise hand button or throw it in there, and I'll, I'll uh, unmute you and and uh, ask some questions. Kaya has a question here. Go for it, Kaya. <clears throat> Sorry, can you guys hear me? Yeah. 
Uh, awesome. So Dan, I know that this is all very specific to uh, the Zettle and you've been uh, doing your best to kind of stay focused on that and stay in your lane. Um, I'm curious if, uh, if you think this kind of, as you said, very medieval approach uh, is something that can potentially work for engaging with other texts from this era, or if you think this is something that's really specific to uh, to the Zettel and its like weird poem format. Um, that is, yeah, you know, I'm not versed, but it's in, you know, in really any of the other, other, um, other masters from this this period well enough. I mean, I think uh, from the from the understanding that I've got of of how Fiore presents his, his material, I think it seems like he kind of he approaches it from a different different angle. But I think there is, but I think there is probably probably room for for this guy. Well, he 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 said this thing here. But he also said this thing back there, so I don't so I don't see any reason why I can't sort of why I can't do this thing in this way that has already been discussed previously, as well as doing it the way that he's talking about it here. Uh, I think I think I see Jeff in the I see Jeff here in the uh, the attendees list. He's got his I know uh, that he's he's very much uh, kind of on that. On that train, where, where I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm hesitant to to speak too much about this, but I think it is worth. Uh, I think it is worth looking looking into for some other things. Uh, I I don't know a thing about about I thirty three, so I'm not going to touch that with a ten foot pole. Uh, but from what I understand about Fiore, I think I think that it, it is it's reasonable to to suggest that that's that's a uh, that's at least a thing worth looking at. Uh, I don't know, I don't know uh, if that was helpful or not. Sounds like it was. Other questions or uh, Jeff, I can unmute you if you wanted to jump in there. Um, sure. I'm, I mean, honestly don't really have too much more to add. I, I'm not uh, an expert on Fiore by any means. I haven't been studying that long, but I mean, I would, I would think so. And, uh, you know, there is an order to the manual and actually different versions of the manuals have presumably a different order. So I think that just that concept of, um, you know, once you reach a certain section, going back to something else, there's uh, some, some new light shed on it. You might understand it differently. I think that's at least totally plausible in my opinion, whether that's something that was intended or not, I couldn't say. Uh, yeah, if, um, yes, if there's no more questions. Anything pop up on the Facebook? Back in here on the Facebook. No, nope. Just a uh, couple fans, fans of the Trash Panda. Uh, but that's all they got to say. So, um, yeah. All right. Uh, anything you want to say in conclusion here, Dan? Uh, no, nothing. Uh... Nothing in, in particular, no thoughts, head empty. Fantastic. Well, thank you. Thank you, Dan, uh, for your contributions to Swords Watch 2021 this year. Thank you all. Thank for you so much for having me. Yeah. Glad to have you. We hope to have you in person next year. Uh, oh, that would be wonderful. We hope that uh, everyone continues to get out and get vaccinated. Um, do all the good things, stay healthy, because um, we would love to see all of your beautiful faces in person next year. 
Uh, and uh, if for those of you listening, for those of you tuned in, if you had fun today, please uh, you know think about dropping us a, a few dollars on our PayPal, uh, just paypal.com slash paypalme slash swordsquatch. We've also got some uh, merch you can buy. Check out the links on our Facebook page. And with that, uh, please uh, tune into a couple of our other sessions later today, and uh, we will see you all then. Thank you and have a good day. Bye, everybody.